Good morning, Lisa. I'm doing very well today. We are waking up at Swinburne Uni Uni's new Advanced Technology Centre in Hawthorne in Melbourne this morning. $100 million centre filled with laboratories and all sorts of amazing technologies. The idea of this is to make Australia one of the worldwide leaders in new technologies and teach the next generation of geniuses. So we're going to be putting the grey matter to the test today. But first, we're going to have a look at the weather, and there's a lot of it today. Okay, we're joined this morning by some of the final year engineering students who've been working in robotics and mechatronics. And these are some of their final year projects, which include things like quadcopters. And I know he's just holding on to that this morning, Carl, but that's because indoors this thing has to be tethered or it'll take off. There are swarm bots. There are vertical takeoff and landing devices. There are flexible robotic arms. And we'll be checking all of these out right throughout the morning. This is an incredible new facility. And the intelligence in this building is quite staggering. But I'm wondering, Carl and Lisa, if these guys are all so smart, why didn't they phone each other before they got dressed today? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, not happy, Jan. Uh, they all look good in red, though. <laughs> Thanks, Stevie. Thanks. I am fantastic. Thank you. Learning a lot this morning because we were in Swinburne's new Advanced Technology Centre. Now, this is what they call the Smart Structures Laboratory. It has a metre-thick concrete floor with pumps underneath that operate all of these hydraulic machines. And these are used to test the, uh, the uh, integrity of structures like buildings or bridges, see how buildings might stand up in earthquakes and make things stronger and safer. It's quite an amazing facility. $100 million spent on this, brand new. And we're going to show you some of the things that these machines can do right after we have a look at the weather this morning. Okay, we're having a look at the universal testing machine, which is in the background here this morning. Now, this can compress, stretch, or break things up to 100 tonnes of force. Now, we've got a piece of metal in there at the moment, and just take a look at what is going to happen here. Now, that's the weight of 50 cars, about 100 tonnes of force, and this machine is going to stretch this piece of metal. Now, you can see it's starting to give, starting to stretch. Whoa, and there it goes. The energy there is being released. Now, this machine can be used basically to test uh, any sorts of materials and new materials. So in the future, we can have lighter, stronger, and better materials for the environment. It's all happening here down at Melbourne. It's the Advanced Technology Centre. They have an open day this Sunday. So if you want to be involved, then come and check it out. We've got more coming up for you shortly. Thank you, Steve. You could get one of those machines to stretch your cars before you go for your run. I thought you, you, you were going to say stretch them. No. Stretch them so that... I actually got some. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You have excellent calves, Carl. You know I don't. I've seen but you I love you for right? saying so. <laughs> so. Let's get a hit of the weather with our very own little alien, Steve Jacobs. Hello, Stevie. <laughs> Good morning to you, Carlos. We're at the Advanced Technology <coughs> Centre, Swinburne's new amazing facility in Melbourne, making Australia smarter. And we're checking out the EEG this morning, or electroencephalography, I think that's right. And Taryn is our guinea pig this morning. She is wearing some electrodes on her head and they actually measure the electrical brain activity. We're going to show you how this works, give you a bit of a, a visual application after we take a look at the weather. I was going to do this, but we tried it on my flat line, so we had to get somebody else to do it. We are looking at the electrical activity in Taryn's brain this morning when all of the cells in the brain fire together. You can actually measure them. Now, if we can have a look at the screen there, we can see Taryn's brain activity. But look how the screen changes when Taryn actually moves her eyebrows. Can you move your eyebrows now? And you can see the difference in the electrical brain activities that are being measured. Um, now, this shows what happens during the mental process. It can analyse the cognitive process and also has medical applications. So you can see if there are deficiencies in hearing or sight. It can also pick up uh, multiple sclerosis. And basically, the uh, sort of research they're doing here is to work out how the, uh, the brain works and the nature of the human mind and consciousness. It is quite out there. It is quite incredible. Mm. If you are interested in technology, then they're having an open day this Sunday. And this is the sort of stuff you can learn here. And it really will hopefully take Australia into uh, the leading world uh, or the world leader when it comes to future technologies, Carl and Lisa. I'd like, to see, well I'd like to see that little hat on you, see what's going on inside your little head, Stevie Jacobs, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as, as I said earlier, I tried it on, Carl, but uh, I, I flatlined. <laughs> that's not true, buddy. No see you soon.
Good morning, Lisa. We've been taking a look at some of the incredible robots that students have been building here at the new Swinburne Advanced Technology Centre in Melbourne. I'm about to introduce you to Ruby, the Rubik's Cube solving robot, right after we take a look at the weather. Good morning to you in Cairns today. David and Richard are part of a six-person team who did a double degree in robotics and computer science, and they have developed this. This is Ruby, the Rubik's Cube solving robot. Now, basically, these guys developed and invented everything from the software through to the microchip, right through to the arms that solve the Rubik Cube. The fastest Rubik Cube solving robot in the world at the moment, the Guinness record, is 64 oh, seconds. Wow. These guys have got it to 8.9 seconds. Now, the human record is 6.7 seconds. That's held by a Melbourne schoolboy. But humans get to pick it up look at it, put it down and then solve it. Mm. That 8.9 seconds includes Ruby taking photos and solving the Rubik's Cube. So these guys are going to go on and try to beat the human record and they are representing Australia at the Academy Awards of IT coming up shortly. So we wish them all the best and this will be on display at the Open Day here on Sunday. They beg me not to refer to them as wonder twin whiz kids, so I'm not going to do it. But yes, they are twins. <laughs> Thank you, Stevie. What amazing robots. It's only a matter of time before they take over, isn't it? Hey? <laughs> Think about next, that next time you put a bit of spaghetti in the microwave. Good morning, everyone. We're at the new Advanced Technology Centre in Melbourne this morning, and these are some of our pilots of the future, the flying students who do their theory here in some pretty advanced technological simulators like this one. We're going to take you for a little fly after we have a look at the weather this morning from the air. So this is the Red Bird Flight Simulator, where they do active research in aviation. I'm in here with Captain Chris. Say good morning, Captain Chris. Good day, Dan. Now, this is where they can uh, test pilots and look at their decision making, look at how they're affected by fatigue or disorientation. And this is all, of course, with a view to making flying safer for them when they become pilots in the future. This is quite an incredible simulator. It's set up exactly like the cockpit of a twin engine plane, and it can take you anywhere in the world. It is very immersive. We're going for a little fly over Cairns this morning and if you would like to check it out or any of the things we've been looking at this morning they've got an open day this Sunday you can come and fly the simulator maybe learn how to create a robot any of the things that we've shown you this morning it is quite incredible it's the Swinburne Advanced Technology Centre new hundred million dollar development here in Melbourne so check it out on Sunday we have seen some brilliant people this morning Carl and Lisa people who don't do things like this Ah! I don't know why I did that, Carl. <laughs> because we are in TV and we have short attention spans. <laughs> and it worked. What? I don't get it. Thanks, Steve. Huh? Me either.